the women's world champion Yi Fang Hu versus Judith Polgar, ranked number one in the world. So a very exciting clash, the first time that uh, these two have played. Um, and the game has started, Judith has the black pieces, E4, C5. So this is already a good interesting choice because we're probably going to enter a, a Sicilian, sharp Sicilian position here. So could be a very exciting game. Knight to F3 and now E6. So this tends to lead towards uh, a can structure, something like that, can Sicilian. D4, C takes D4, Knight takes D4, Knight C6, Knight C3 and now A6. So this is quite a flexible system. Um, often black will place a bishop on c5, sometimes on e7, and of course the idea behind a6 is to play b5 later on, taking some initiative on the queen side. So a6, bishop to e2, and now knight on g to e7. So I'm not sure if this is the main line or one of the main lines here, but one of the ideas often when black places a knight on this e7 square is to capture on d4 and then put this knight on c6. So trying to take control of some dark squares in the centre of the board. Um, I will just see if we had any more moves. Nope, white is thinking about her next option here. So interesting start to the game. Interesting Sicilian there. So it could be some fireworks going on there, I think. So was a variation uh, pioneered by Mark Taimanov. Right, knight, okay. knight g7. Okay, right. But uh, certainly in the family of the Khan and the Paulson, uh, a lot of transpositions possible. I, I used to play this myself. <laughs> okay, with success? <laughs> uh, well, unless when I got mated in 20 moves, but... Uh. That always happens when you play Sicilian. <laughs> Checkmate in 20 moves is just one of the learning processes you go through when you play Sicilian. It's happened to the best of them. So, we had a Tarmanov, um, Sicilian, Judith Black against Yi Fang, uh, Bishop to E2, Knight G7, so... The idea to take on d4 and go knight c6, or to play knight to g6 here. Bishop to f4, so knight to g6 was played, gaining a tempo. Now bishop to d6, so white is aiming to get a slight advantage, a slight edge with this bishop to d6 move. Um, be no big advantage here, but a hold on d6 is a very pleasant thing to have. So Judith's gone for exchange and just played queen to e7. Okay, and okay, let's have a. Th well, white has control of d6, but black has a good pawn formation in the center and some play along the b file later on. So you have the world ladies champion, Yi Fang versus Judith Poga, ranked number one in the list. So the top two ladies players in the world. And uh, this is the first time they've probably met over the board. Um, and the last position we had was after queen to e7. So Indeed, there was a castle's queen side move, and we've done wow, it's gone the Jack Rudd line. The Jack Rudd variation. Jack suggested this line for black. Knight to f4 earlier on. Bishop f3. The point being, if here you just take on d5 with a pawn, I guess. And then, yeah, king takes, pawn takes, king here, pawn takes here. Rooks on pre, bishops on pre. So, bishop to f3. Rook to b8, and now knight to d5 probably is a threat, so rook back to d2. And, okay. Well, black would love to play d5 here at the right moment, because otherwise white's going to have time to play g3 and start... I mean, if white's given a, given a move, let's say, I don't know, I'm just going to make a move for black, then probably something like g3 and knight goes back and then rook back to d6 is unpleasant. Knight to e5, just bishop to e2, and you've got this fawn on d6 on your side. Um, you might be able to get rid of it with knight to f7, but it just seems a bit passive. So uh, after rook back, um, d5 would be the logical choice. Number one and number two playing against each other. So very interesting to see what happens here. And Yifang has the white pieces, which uh, you know, obviously gives you an advantage with the white pieces, then she'd be really trying to win this game. I mean, imagine if you beat Judith, so it's a great coup. Um, especially as your world champion, you want to prove you're the best in the world. Um, okay, so the, we had, we just go over the last couple. Rook to b8, rook here, g5 was played. Nice positional move because 
Now, if the knight ever goes back to g6 and e5, it's less likely to get hit by f4. So it takes control of the king size and squares. Knight to a4. With the idea of maybe coming to c5. Maybe b3 and it's going to come and c4 even. c4, maybe that's the idea. c4, that's probably more like it. Trying to get control, stop black from playing this d5 move. c4, looks like a good option. This a pawn could be weak. Quite in the balance this game, but maybe white has something very small. g5, so this is uh, Yifang versus Judith. And uh, g5 was the last move, knight to, well knight to a4 was, and now d5. If black doesn't play d5 now, white might have time to play c4, stopping it altogether. So d5, g3, kicking the knight away, rook to e1. Similar idea suggested before, to take here and use the pin, king to f6. It's this idea we've seen on a number of occasions. Bishop h5. So the bishop was going to be attacked by this, and now if the knight comes here, white can play f4, which is a bit dangerous for black. Rook b4, knight to c3. Knight has come back. Okay, so if d4, can we, can we go here, check? If d4, I might go e5, knight takes knight e4, check. Maybe. And oh, d4 has been played. <laughs> Typical. D4 has been played. Wow. Wow. Judith's obviously going to see E5. It's not a move she's going to miss. E5 check. Can she go King F5? <laughs> <laughs> I very much doubt it. Well, let's have a look at taking. That looks critical. Then knight's e4 check. And we've got to decide where we put our king. e7 or g7. Um, is there a big difference between the two squares? I'm not sure there is. This, okay, let's go for king g7. And then knight takes a g5. Ha hitting the knight with the, this knight. Um, f6 looks a bit ropey. A little bit dangerous. Well, probably f4 at the worst, but maybe knight takes e6 as well. Interesting. Yeah, might. Knight g6. He's played e5. He's played e5, okay. So, as expected, white has played e5 here. This is really turning into an exciting clash, isn't it, between uh, the top two uh, lady players in the world. Um, very interesting clash here. I mean, it's getting a little tactical skirmishes here. Um, looks like any result is possible still in this game. It could go any way. Uh, black has a nice pawn formation, but uh, white has some tactical chances here. Um, and let's have a look. So knight takes knight e4, king g7. Maybe, maybe, maybe we could try putting the king here, see if this helps. Knight takes g5, and now f6 here. It's all to play for. All to play for in this position. Yeah. I wonder what the computer thinks of this position, because uh, it's going to clear up quite soon, I'd imagine, after E5. So I think we come back when that game's cleared up a bit, when we've uh, when they finish this like little tactical battle they've had, and we'll see how the position has been resolved. Now, back to Mamajarov versus Neji. Let's have a look. Okay, well, the clash between Yifang and Judith. Um, it looked like Judith had gone horribly wrong. Time situation at the moment in this. Both got about 12 minutes left, so not any serious pressure on their time. And it looked like the position around here, white's just a pawn up for very little. Um, bishop to f3 was suggested, but f4 was played. Rook b5, king f6. Well, it is a pawn. It is a pawn. Maybe Judith's got some compensation with the d pawn, but it's still a pawn. Bishop f3, c5, a4. And exchange of pawns, b3, bishop to e4. Current position. 
safe pawn up for white. White is a safe pawn up and Judith's going to be extremely unhappy with herself to have reached this position. She didn't need to go down this line and I, I think white's just going to go and win this game. As well as being a pawn up, black has so many pawn weaknesses. Four pawn islands. A6, D4, F7. Black, white only has two and after bishop to d3, everything is defended. You can play this game on forever and grind your opponent down. Yi Fang having a brilliant tournament so far. Some great results. And this will be, well, this will go down in a lot of papers. A lot of press will be picking up on this game. So could be a brilliant victory for White there. OK, Polgar, let's have a look at an update on this game. So Yi Fang Polgar, bishop to e4 was the last move played. Bishop g4, rook e1, rook d6, the bishop finds a lovely square on d3. White's just going to win this game. What a result that is. What a result. The women's world champion against the top women's player in the world, never played before, struggled to see who's really, you know, could be the top women player. But okay, Judith is still 100 points higher than uh, Yi Fang, but would be a great result for White if White can win. White is a pawn up and it seems like a very safe pawn to me. This has happened, bishop b6, king d2. This is a position you can grind all day. Grind all day long. Horrible to defend. Too many pawns weak. Black, White can just start ganging up on them one by one. Maybe just on this one first, maybe this one. Horrible, horrible position for Judith. But it could be a great game for Yifang. The other exciting encounter we've had today has between, been between uh, the ladies' world champion and the top female player in the world. So we have Yi Fang Hu versus Judith Polgar, and it looked like Judith was in a lot of trouble. Um, and indeed, let's just get to the final position we, before we take a quick break there. One, some of these pawns do start to drop. There you go, two pawns up now. Two pawns up, that's enough to win the game. Could resign here to be fair, but um, I'm sure she won't want to resign. Um, she won't want to lose this game, that's for sure. You know, uh, but a very good result for White. Very, very impressive. She should be commended for a lot of her games here. She's proved she can play with the top players in the world. Uh, the current um, women's world champion is going to win. So a bit of history being made there, and we've seen on Twitter that maybe. Um, a match between these two would be a good idea if we had some sponsor out there to see who is the strongest uh, woman player in the world. So, um, very good result though for um, you fan there. So, let's move on to some of the other games. We have what looks like a draw between Adams and Howell coming up.